the Swift Programming Language book, copyrighted by Apple and made available under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. This slide deck is based on the book and made available at this GitHub repository. Strings and Characters A string is a series of characters, such as Hello World or Albatross. Swift strings are represented by the string type. The contents of a string can be accessed in various ways, including as a collection of character values. Swift string and character types provide a fast, Unicode compliant way to work with text in your code. The syntax for string creation and manipulation is lightweight and readable with a string literal syntax that is similar to C. String concatenation is as simple as combining two strings with the plus operator. And string mutability is managed by choosing between a constant or a variable, just like any other value in Swift. You can also use strings to insert constants, variables, literals, and expressions into longer strings in a process known as string interpolation. This makes it easy to create custom string values for display, storage, and printing. Despite the simplicity of syntax, Swift's string type is a fast, modern string implementation. Every string is composed of encoding independent Unicode characters and provides support for accessing those characters in various Unicode representations. Note, Swift's string type is bridged with Foundation's NSString class. Foundation also extends string to expose methods defined by NSString. This means if you import Foundation, you can access those NSString methods on string without casting. For more information about using string with Foundation and Coco, see Bridging Between String and NSString. String literals. You can include predefined string values within your code as string literals. A string literal is a sequence of characters surrounded by double quotation marks. Use a string literal as an initial value for a constant or a variable. Note that Swift infers a type of string for the sum string constant because it is initialized with a string literal value. Multi-line string literals. If you need a string that spans several lines, use a multi-line string literal, a sequence of characters surrounded by three double quotation marks. A multi-line string literal includes all of the lines between its opening and closing quotation marks. The string begins on the first line after the opening quotation marks, which means that neither of the strings below start or end with a line break. When your source code includes a line break inside of a multi-line string literal, that line break also appears in the string's value. If you want to use line breaks to make your source code easier to read, but you don't want the line breaks to be part of the string's value, write a backslash at the end of those lines. To make a multi-line string literal that begins or ends with a line feed, write a blank line as the first or the last line. A multi-line string can be indented to match the surrounding code. The white space before the closing quotation marks tells Swift what white space to ignore in all of the other lines. However, if you write white space at the beginning of a line in addition to what's before the closing quotation marks, that white space is included. In the example above, even though the entire multi-line string literal is indented, the first and last lines on the string do not begin with any white space. The middle line has more indentation than the closing quotation marks, so it starts with that extra four space indentation. Special characters in string literals. String literals can include the following special characters. The escaped special character backslash zero, null character, backslash backslash, backslash T, horizontal tab, backslash N, new line, backslash R, carriage return, backslash quotation mark, which is the double quotation mark, or backslash single quote, the single quotation mark. An arbitrary Unicode scalar value written as backslash U and then N inside curly braces, where N is a one to eight digit hexadecimal number. Unicode is discussed in Unicode below. The code shows four examples of these special characters. The wise words constant contains two escaped double quotation marks. The dollar sign, black heart, and sparkling heart 
constants demonstrate the Unicode scalar format. Because multi-line string literals use three double quotation marks instead of just one, you can include a double quotation mark inside of a multi-line string literal without escaping it. To include a text triple quotation mark in a multi-line string, escape at least one of the quotation marks. Extended string delimiters. You can place a string literal within extended delimiters to include special characters in a string without invoking their effect. You place your string within quotation marks and surround that with number signs. For example, printing this string literal prints the line feed escape sequence rather than printing the string across two lines. If you need the special effects of a character in a string literal, match the number of number signs within the string following the escape character. For example, if this is your string and you want to break the line, you can use this instead. Similarly, this example also breaks the line. String literals created using extended delimiters can also be multi-line string literals. You can use extended delimiters to include the triple quotation mark text in a multi-line string, overriding the default behavior that ends the literal. Initializing an empty string. To create an empty string value as the starting point for building a longer string, either assign an empty string literal to a variable or initialize a new string instance with initializer syntax. Find out whether a string value is empty by checking its boolean is empty property. String mutability. You indicate whether a particular string can be modified or mutated by assigning it to a variable, in which case it can be modified, or to a constant, in which case it cannot be modified. Note, this approach is different from string mutation in Objective-C and Coco, where you choose between two classes, NS string and NS mutable string, to indicate whether a string can be mutated. Strings are value types. Swift string is a value type. If you create a new string value, that string value is copied when it is passed into a function or method, or when it is assigned to a constant or a variable. In each case, a new copy of the existing string value is created, and the new copy is passed or assigned, not the original version. Value types are described in structures and enumerations are value types. Swift's copy by default string behavior ensures that when a function or method passes you a string value, it is clear that you own the exact string value regardless of where it came from. You can be confident that the string you are passed will not be modified unless you modify it yourself. Behind the scenes, Swift's compiler optimizes string usage so that actual copying takes place only when absolutely necessary. This means you always get great performance when working with strings as value types. Working with characters. You can access the individual character values for a string by iterating over the string with a for in loop. The for in loop is described in for in loops. Alternatively, you can create a standalone character constant or variable from a single character string literal by providing a character type annotation. String values can be constructed by passing an array of character values as an argument to its initializer. Concatenating strings and characters. String values can be added together or concatenated with the addition operator to create a new string value. You can also append a string value to an existing string variable with the addition assignment operator. You can append a character value to a string variable with the strings append method. Note, you cannot append a string or character to an existing character variable because a character value must contain a single character only. If you are using multi-line string literals to build up the lines of a longer string, you want every line in the string to end with a line break, including the last line. In the code, Concatenating bad start with end produces a two-line string, which is not the desired result. Because the last line of bad start does not end with a line break, that line gets combined with the first line of end. In contrast, both lines of good start end with a line break, so it, when it's combined with the end, the result has three lines as expected. 
String interpolation is a way to construct a new string value from a mix of constants, variables, literals, and expressions by including their values inside a string literal. You can use string interpolation in both single line and multi line string literals. Each item that you insert into the string literal is wrapped in a pair of parentheses prefixed by a backslash. In the example, the value of multiplier is inserted into a string literal as multiplier. This placeholder is replaced with the actual value of multiplier when the string interpolation is evaluated to create an actual string. The value of multiplier is also part of a larger expression later in the string. This expression calculates the value of double multiplier times 2.5 and inserts the result 7.5 into the string. You can use extended string delimiters to create strings containing characters that would otherwise be treated as a string interpolation. To use string interpolation inside a string that uses extended delimiters, match the number of number signs after the backslash to the number of number signs at the beginning and end of the string. Note, the expressions you write inside parentheses within an interpolated string cannot contain an unescaped backslash, a carriage return, or a line feed. However, they can contain other string literals. Unicode. Unicode is an international standard for encoding, representing, and processing text in different writing systems. It enables you to represent almost any character from any language in a standardized form and to read and write those characters to and from an external source, such as a text file or a web page. Swift string and character types are fully Unicode compliant, as described in this section. Behind the scenes, Swift's native string type is built from Unicode scalar values. A Unicode scalar value is a unique 21-bit number for a character or modifier, such as U61 for Latin small character A, or U1F425 for front-facing baby chick. Note that not all 21-bit Unicode scalar values are assigned to a character. Some scalars are reserved for future assignment or for use in UTF-16 encoding. Scalar values that have been assigned to a character typically also have a name, such as Latin small character A and front facing baby chick in the examples above. Every instance of Swift's character type represents a single extended grapheme cluster. An extended grapheme cluster is a sequence of one or more Unicode scalars that, when combined, produce a single human readable character. Here is an example. The letter E with accent can be represented by the single Unicode scalar Latin small letter E with acute. However, the same letter can also be represented as a pair of scalars, a standard letter E, Latin small letter E, followed by the combining acute accent scalar. The combining acute accent scalar is graphically applied to the scalar that precedes it, turning an E without accent into an E with accent when it is rendered by a Unicode aware text rendering system. In both cases, the letter E with accent is represented as a single swift character value that represents an extended grapheme cluster. In the first case, the cluster contains a single scalar. In the second case, it is a cluster of two scalars. Extended grapheme clusters are a flexible way to represent many complex script characters as a single character value. For example, syllables from the Korean alphabet can be represented as either a precomposed or a decomposed sequence. Both of these representations qualify as a single character value in Swift. Extended grapheme clusters enable scalars for enclosing marks, such as combining enclosing circle, or 20DD, to enclose other Unicode scalars as part of a single character value. Unicode scalars for regional indicator symbols can be combined in pairs to make a single character value, such as this combination of regional indicator symbol letter U and regional indicator symbol letter S. Counting characters. To retrieve a count of the character values in a string, use the count property of the string. 
Note that Swift's use of extended grapheme clusters for character values means that string concatenation and modification may not always affect a string's character count. For example, if you initialize a new string with the four character word cafe and then append a combining acute accent to the end of the string, the resulting string will still have a character count of four with the fourth character of E with accent, not E. Note, extended grapheme clusters can be composed of multiple Unicode scalars. This means that different characters and different representations of the same character can require different amounts of memory to store. Because of this, characters in Swift do not each take up the same amount of memory within a string's representation. As a result, the number of characters in a string cannot be calculated without iterating through the string to determine its extended grapheme cluster boundaries. If you are working with particularly long string values, be aware the count property must iterate over the Unicode scalars in the entire string in order to determine the characters for the string. The count of the characters returned by the count property is not always the same as the length property of an NS string that contains the same characters. The length of an NS string is based on the number of 16-bit code units within the string's UTF-16 representation and not the number of Unicode extended grapheme clusters within the string. Accessing and modifying a string. You can access and modify a string through its methods and properties or by using subscript syntax. String indices. Each string value has an associated index type string.index, which corresponds to the position of each character in the string. As mentioned above, different characters can require different amounts of memory to store. So in order to determine which character is at a particular position, you must iterate over each Unicode scalar from the start or end of that string. For this reason, Swift strings cannot be indexed by integer values. Use the start index property to access the position of the first character of a string. The end index property is the position after the last character in a string. As a result, the end index property is not a valid argument to of the string subscript. If a string is empty, start index and end index, index are equal. You can access the indices before and after a given index using the index before and index after methods of a string. To access an index further away from the given index, you can use the index offset by method instead of calling one of these methods multiple times. You can use subscript syntax to access the character at a particular string index. Attempting to access an index outside of a string's range or a character at an index outside of the string's range will trigger a runtime error. Use the indices property to access all of the indices of individual characters in a string. Note. You can use the start index and end index properties and the index before, index after, and index offset by methods on any type that conforms to the collection protocol. This includes string, as shown here, as well as collection types such as array, dictionary, and set. Inserting and removing. To insert a single character into a string at a specified index, use the insert at method and to insert the contents of another string at a specified index, use the insert contents of at method. To remove a single character from a string at a specified index, use the remove at method. And to remove a substring at a specified range, use the remove subrange method. Note, you can use the insert at, insert contents of at, remove at, and remove subrange methods on any type that conforms to the range replaceable collection protocol. This includes string, as shown here, as well as collection types such as array, dictionary, and set. Substrings. When you get a substring from a string, for example using a subscript or a method like prefix, the result is an instance of substring, not another string. Substrings in Swift have most of the same methods as strings, which means you can work with substrings the way you work with strings. However, unlike strings, you use substrings for only a short amount of time while per performing actions on a string. When you are ready to store the result for a longer time, you convert the substring to an instance of string. Like strings, each substring has a region of memory where the characters that make up the string are stored. 
The difference between strings and substrings is that as a performance optimization, a substring can reuse part of the memory that's used to store the original string or part of the memory that's used to store another substring. Strings have a similar optimization, but if two strings share memory, they are equal. This performance optimization means you do not have to pay the performance cost of copying memory until you modify either the string or the substring. As mentioned above, substrings are not suitable for long-term storage because they reuse the storage of the original string. The entire original string must be kept in memory as long as any of its substrings are being used. In the example, greeting is a string, which means it has a region of memory where the characters that make up the string are stored. Because beginning is a substring of greeting, it reuses the memory that greeting uses. In contrast, new string is a string. When it's created from the substring, it has its own storage. Note, both string and substring conform to the string protocol protocol, which means it is often convenient for string manipulation functions to accept a string protocol value. You can call such functions with either a string or a substring value. Comparing strings. Swift provides three ways to compare textual values, string and character equality, prefix equality, and suffix equality. String and character equality. String and character equality is checked with the equal to operator and the not equal to operator, as described in comparison operators. Two string values, or two character values, are considered equal if their extended grapheme clusters are canonically equivalent. Extended grapheme clusters are canonically equivalent if they have the same linguistic meaning and appearance, even if they are composed from different Unicode scalers behind the scenes. For example, Latin small character E with acute is canonically equivalent to Latin small letter E followed by combining acute accent. Both of these extended grapheme clusters are valid ways to represent the character E with accent, and so they are considered to be canonically equivalent. Conversely, Latin capital letter A, as used in English, is not equivalent to Cyrillic capital letter A, as used in Russian. The characters are visually similar, but do not have the same linguistic meaning. Note, string and character comparisons in Swift are not locale sensitive. Prefix and suffix equality. To check whether a string has a particular string prefix or suffix, call the strings has prefix and has suffix methods, both of which take a singular argument of type string and return a Boolean value. The examples consider an array of strings representing the scene locations from the first two acts of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. You can use the has prefix method with the Romeo and Juliet array to count the number of scenes in act one of the play. Similarly, Use the has suffix method to count the number of scenes that take place in or around Capulet's mansion and Friar Lawrence's cell. Note, the has prefix and has suffix methods perform a character-by-character -character canonical equivalence comparison between the extended grapheme clusters in each string, as described in String and Character Equality. Unicode Representations of Strings when a Unicode string is written to a text file or some other storage, the Unicode scalers in that string are encoded in one of several Unicode-defined encoding forms. Each form encodes the string in small chunks known as code units. These include the UTF-8 encoding form, which encodes a string as 8-bit code units, the UTF-16 encoding form, which encodes a string as 16-bit code units, and the UTF-32 encoding form, which encodes a string as 32-bit code units. Swift provides several different ways to access Unicode representations of strings. You can iterate over the string with a for in statement to access its individual character values as Unicode extended grapheme clusters. This process is described in working with characters. Alternatively, access a string value in one of three other Unicode compliant representations, a collection of UTF-8 code units accessed with the string's UTF-8 property, a collection of UTF-16 code units accessed with the string's UTF-16 property, or a collection of 21-bit Unicode scalar values equivalent to the string's UTF-32 encoding form accessed with the string's Unicode scalars property. 
Each example below shows a different representation of the following string, which is made up of the characters D, O, G, double explanation mark, or Unicode scalar 203C, and the dog face character, or Unicode scalar 1F436. UTF-8 representation. You can access the UTF-8 representation of a string by iterating over the UTF-8 property. This property is of type string.utf8view, which is a collection of unsigned 8-bit uint8 values, one for each byte in the string's UTF-8 representation. In this example, the first three decimal code unit values, 68, 111, 103, represent the characters D, O, and G, whose UTF-8 representation is the same as their ASCII representation. The next three decimal code unit values, 226, 128, 188, are a three-byte UTF-8 representation of the double exclamation mark character. The last four code unit values, 240, 159, 144, 182, are a four-byte UTF-8 representation of the dog face character. You can access a UTF-16 representation of a string by iterating over its UTF-16 property. This property is of type string.utf16view, which is a collection of unsigned 16-bit uint16 values, one for each 16-bit code unit in the string's UTF representation. Again, the first three code unit values, 68, 111, 103, represent the characters D, O, G, whose UTF-16 code units have the same values as in the string's UTF-8 representation, because these Unicode scalars represent ASCII characters. The fourth code unit value, 8252, is a decimal equivalent of the hexadecimal value 203C, which represents the Unicode scalar U plus 203C for the double exclamation mark character. This character can be represented as a single code unit in UTF-16. The fifth and sixth code unit values, 55357 and 56374, are a UTF-16 surrogate pair representation of the dog face character. These values are a high surrogate value of UD83D, decimal value 55357, and a low surrogate value of UDC36, decimal value 56374. You can access a Unicode scalar representation of a string value by iterating over its Unicode scalars property. This property is of type Unicode scalar view, which is a collection of values of type Unicode scalar. Each Unicode scalar has a value property that returns the scalar's 21-bit value represented within a UNT32 value. The value properties for the first three Unicode scalar values, 68, 111, 103, once again represent the characters D, O, and G. The fourth code unit value, 8252, is again a decimal equivalent of the hexadecimal value 203C, which represents the Unicode scalar U plus 203C for the double exclamation mark character. The value property of the fifth and final Unicode scalar, 128054, is a decimal equivalent of the hexadecimal value 1F436, which represents the Unicode scalar U plus 1F436 for the dog face character. As an alternative to querying their value properties, each Unicode scalar can also be used to construct a new string value, such as with string interpolation.